Hello, distinguished viewers all over the world. Welcome to Simplified Maths Class. My name is Mr. Mike Omini, and today we'll be treating the topic Pythagoras Theory. All right, so please, if you have not subscribed to our videos, kindly click on the red subscribe and on the notification bell, and God will bless you as you do that. All right, so Pythagoras Theorem. The Pythagoras Theorem is a theorem that is used in solving um, the sides of a triangle that is right angle, all right? Okay, for instance, if a, a right angle triangle has two sides given and you're asked to find the third side, then the only simple way to do that is by the use of the Pythagoras theorem. And the Pythagoras theorem simply states that the square of the hypotenuse of a right angle triangle equals the sum of the squares of the other two sides. And of course, the other two sides are the opposite and the adjacent. So the square of the hypotenuse equals the square of the opposite plus the square of the adjacent. Please take note of that. All right, so we have that on board here. They say given a right angle triangle ABC with angle ABC equals to theta. Please take note of that. Watch this. All right, so we have this. We have this. This is the right angle triangle, right angle at this point. So this is A, B, and this is C. So this is a right angle triangle with the angle at A, B, C, theta, meaning at B here. So here is where we have the theta. Now understand that the side that is the longest, the longest side AB, which of course is always opposite to the right angle here. You know, you have it opposite to the right angle triangle. So just know that that side is known as the hypotenuse. So this side is the hypotenuse. Take note of that. Here is your hypotenuse. Hypotenuse, HYP. All right, and so, the other side that is opposite to the given angle theta, the side opposite to this given angle theta is the side we call the opposite. Please take note of that. The side that is opposite to the right angle is of course the longest side of the right angle and that side is the hypotenuse. So assuming the theta is given here, the opposite will be this other side. But if the theta is here, the opposite will be this other side. So the side that is directly opposite to the given angle theta is the side we call the opposite. And the other side, of course, that is adjacent to the angle theta is what we call the adjacent. Please take note of that. So the hypotenuse is the longest side, which is directly opposite to the given right angle. And then the side opposite to the given angle theta is the opposite. And the other side is adjacent. And of course, it's adjacent to the angle theta. All right, so watch me. It means that the hypotenuse is side AB. Line AB is the hypotenuse. Line AB is, of course, the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is line AB. So the hypotenuse is A to B. And that A to B is... Watch, here we have a big C. So this side is known as a small C. So don't forget, this is a small C. This is the big B. So this side opposite there is a small B. And this is the A. This other side is called the small A. Please take note of that. All right, so hypotenuse is line A to B, which of course is the side small C. Don't forget that. All right, now the opposite is line A to C. The opposite is line AC. And line AC is the small b. Why? Because it's facing the big b. So it's small b. Don't forget, and the adjacent, of course, the adjacent is equals to line BC. Line BC. And line BC, of course, is a small a. Small a because it's facing the big a. Don't forget that. So your hypotenuse is AB, which is small c. Your opposite is AC, which is small b. And the adjacent is BC, line BC, which is small a. And so, by Pythagoras, by the use of Pythagoras, by Pythagoras, of course, the Pythagoras theorem states that the square on the hypotenuse, the square on the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the other two sides, which is the opposite squared and 
the adjacent square. Don't forget that. The adjacent square or the opposite square. Alright, so it means that the hypotenuse, which is small c, our c squared will be equals to the opposite, which is small b. So that will be b squared plus the other side is what? a squared. And don't forget, it therefore means that, okay, our c squared will be equals to a squared plus b squared. That's what the Pythagoras theorem states. So the square on the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. Alright, so we are going to take an example with that to see how we can solve problems with the use of Pythagoras theorem. But before we proceed, we need to know what Pythagoras triple are. What are Pythagoras triple? Or what do we refer to as a Pythagoras triple? Alright, so a Pythagoras triple is a set of three numbers that satisfies the condition of the Pythagoras theorem. A Pythagoras triple is a set of three numbers that satisfies the condition of the Pythagoras theorem. All right, say for instance, the number three, four, five, three, four, five is referred to as a Pythagoras triple. It's referred to as a Pythagoras or a Pythagorean triple. Any on a Pythagorean triple or Pythagoras triple. Why? Because these three sets of numbers satisfy the condition of the Pythagoras theorem that tells you that the square of the longest one is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. Let's see if it is true. It means that the longest one is 5 squared. 5 squared, of course, will be equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. The other two sides is what? 3 squared plus 4 squared. Please take note of that. Let's see if it satisfies that condition because the Pythagorean theorem tells you that the sum of the square, this, this, the square of the longest side, of course, which is the hypotenuse, is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. So 5 squared is 25. Alright, so 3 squared is 9. 4 squared is 16. And of course, 25 will be equal to 9 plus 16 is what? 25. You can see that the left hand side is equal to the right hand side. So it means that the square of the longest side is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. It therefore means that 3, 4, 5 is a Pythagorean triple because these three sets of numbers satisfy the condition of the Pythagoras theorem. Please take note of that. We have other, we have other numbers like 6, 8, 10, 9, 12, 15, 5, 12, 13, 10, 24, 26, and so on. There are a lot of three sets of numbers that actually satisfy this Pythagorean theorem. And if, of course, you know the Pythagoras triple, you won't waste time in finding the missing side of a right angle triangle when the other two sides are given. Because already you know the three sides or you know the Pythagoras triple or the three numbers that will satisfy the Pythagorean triple. All right, so let's take an example. Let's just solve a problem that has to do with Pythagoras theorem. Let's say, for instance, you might be given a problem like this. Um, a stick, a stick, or let's say a ladder, a ladder of length um, 15 cm leans on a vertical wall leans on a vertical wall full stop if the distance between the ladder if the distance between the ladder and the foot of the wall or if the distance between the ladder and the foot of the wall and the foot of the wall is 12 cm find the height of the wall find the height of the wall Alright, this question is just a question that you can use the Pythagoras theorem to work. Alright, now this is what we are talking about. This is a ladder. This is a ladder. Let's see, this is a ladder. It leans on a wall. This is a wall. 
right? This is a ladder leaning on the wall. There, by this angle, is the right angle triangle. Please take note of that. Now, we have been given that the length of this ladder, the length of this ladder is 15 cm. And they say the ladder leans on the vertical wall. This is the wall. The wall. If the distance between the ladder and the foot of the wall, okay, this is the wall, all right? So this is the wall. This is, of course, the ladder. And this is the foot of the wall. Please don't forget that. This is the wall itself. This is the ladder. And this is the foot of the wall. Now, they say if the distance between the ladder itself and the foot of the wall is 12 cm. Now, they simply want us to find the height of this wall. So, we should find the height of the wall. So, that's x. Please take note of that. Alright, so you should understand that by Pythagoras, by Pythagoras theorem, of course, this is the right angle triangle, the longest side, which is the side that faces the right angle, which of course is the ladder. Please take note. The longest side, 15 squared, the square of the longest side is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. The other two sides is 12 squared plus the height of the ladder we are looking for, which is x squared. Please take note of that. So it means that the square on the longest side is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. Of course, the other two sides are the opposite and the adjacent. All right, so we are going to have 15 squared, 225. That's 225. So we have that as 225 is equal to 12 squared is 144 plus x squared. So we want to find the value of x squared. So we are trying to say that our x squared plus 144 will give us 225. So which means our x squared will be equals to 225 plus 144 crosses to be minus 144. Alright, so x squared will be equals to 225 minus 144 will give us 81. Therefore, x now will be equals to the square root of 81, which means our x will be equals to 9. So we've been able to find the x which is 9. We can now conclude that, therefore, the height of the wall, the height of the wall, the height of the wall is 9 centimeters. That's the height of the wall. The height of the wall is 9 centimeters. All right. So please take note of that. We've been able to use the Pythagoras theorem to solve this problem. Because the Pythagoras theorem is usually used in solving uh, a problem that involves looking for the side of a right angle triangle, assuming two other sides are given. Please, that's when we use the Pythagoras theorem. And please don't forget, it's always this way. Even if you have another one where you're asked to find this. Okay, let's try a second example before we close the slide all right in our second example we'll be asked to find let's say find the length of a stick placed on a wall Placed on a wall of height, um, let's say place on a wall of height um, 12 cm. 12 cm. If the base of the stick, if the base of the stick is 5 um, 5 cm or let's use meters this time around let's use meters it's the same thing so let's use meters if the base of the stick is 5 meters away from the foot of the wall all right so this problem also is a problem that involves what um, the use of the Pythagoras theorem all right so they say um, this is um, a stick 
Now they say we should find the length of a stick. We are looking for here the length of this stick, which is placed on a wall. All right. So this is the wall. This is the stick. And this is the foot of that wall. So they say you should find the length of a stick placed on a wall of height 12 meters. So this wall is of height 12 meters. That's the height of that wall. Now they say if the base of the stick is 5 meters, the base of this stick, now this is the stick, <laughs> the base of this stick is 5 meters from the foot of the wall. So that means we have 5 meters here. So the base of the stick is 5 meters from the foot of the wall. So they simply want us to find the length of that stick that is placed on the wall of height 12 meters. And of course, if you look at this diagram, see that we have a right angle triangle. And of course, the hypotenuse is here. And by Pythagoras theorem, by Pythagoras theorem, we know that the, the square of the hypotenuse is equals to the squares or the sum of the squares of the other two sides. All right. So the hypotenuse itself is the length of the stick we are looking for, which is x squared is equals to the opposite can be 12 meters, 12 squared, the other two sides and 5 squared. So the other two sides is 12 and 5. All right. So our x squared will be equal to 12 squared is 144 plus 5 squared is 25, all right? So our x squared will be equal to 144 plus 25 will give us 169. That means our x is the square root of 169, which gives our x to be 13. So we've been able to calculate the length of, or the length of that stick, 13 meters. Therefore, the length of the stick, the length of the stick is... 13 meters. All right, and also understand that it therefore means that 5, 12, and 13 are Pythagorean triple. 5, 12, and 13. They are Pythagorean triple. That is a set of three numbers that satisfies the condition of the Pythagoras theorem. Don't forget that. Because in exams, I may not necessarily need to work this. Assuming it's a subjective question. Because the moment I see 12 and 5, I know that the missing side is 12. So you really need to know this Pythagorean triple, the three set of numbers that will always satisfy the condition of the Pythagoras theorem. All right, so we've been able to solve problems with Pythagoras theorem. When next we meet, we'll be trying to look into trigonometrical ratios like Sokatoa. When an angle is given and you're asked to find maybe one side that is missing, one side is given, an angle is given, and all that. So we should be able to use what we call the Sokatoa, which is the three gonometrical ratios. Sine angle of theta, cos angle of theta, tan angle of theta, and so on. All right. So thank you very much for watching this slide, Pythagoras Theorem. I still beg you, if you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, so please do that by clicking on the red subscribe and on the bell notification. And give us a thumbnail if you enjoyed our class. If you have any question whatsoever, please don't forget to drop it in the comment section. I will respond back to your question. God bless you and see you in our next slide. Cheers.